So I was 16 when I did my first air show and then they just got pulled for some reason. And Kurt was just rolling at the time, so it was cool for him to be all hyped and talk about bringing it back and here we are now. You know, and it's happening. Yeah, this is my ninth year coming back here as a person not living here anymore, but I grew up here my whole life in Coolangatta, Tweed Heads area. Basically been coming back in those last nine years for seven of them. As a tour surfer, I'd come back here only for about a month to six weeks across the, the Quicksilver Pro time when the events are on. Now to finally come back and with a completely different purpose than I ever have before. It's weird to come back with this mind frame of just like so passionate about this airborne project with airs and then also to be at home and to be able to put it up in front of my friends and family and also obviously the globe and try and showcase something new in our sport. It was a daunting thing almost being here for those few weeks leading up to it. We'll just have a good group discussion, discussion before I'm just yeah, I getting think, it I think it's good to have all those. Everyone there, they're kind of good there. Yeah. Or they think, uh, these are high-scoring areas right there themselves or different areas. Right. And how high do we go on creating this? For me, on my side, I really want the surfers to feel like they're a part of this movement. They're a part of this platform and everything. So I've been, to develop the criteria, to develop the format, I've been really asking a lot of the guys, like, okay, what makes sense to you? Does this make sense? Like you know, what should we be scoring the highest? Is it big and now or is it tech? Is it, you know, where are we, what avenue, what what gets scored more? We have big ramps out there, we're gonna leave a big room, you know? Yeah, like, there's gonna be a lot of like, like, scores. There's gonna be heaps of those scores. And you just tell them that we'll try our best to make sure that gaps of each like point between two and three, three and four has a different class of airs, yeah. you know what I mean? Exactly. The airborne concept, it was kind of in my mind maybe three to four years ago, thinking, okay, how can I actually make this happen? You know, these kids coming up right now, they've got, they get off the juniors at 18, and then I'm seeing them just getting so coached straight to the QS, and then if they don't cut it in the first year or two, they lose their sponsor, and then boof. I know myself, without the stepping stone of the air shows that I was being able to do before I got to tour, I would have never got to the tour because, you know, I wouldn't have had that, that that platform of the air shows to be able to make a name for myself, to be able to put myself out to the media, become a free surfer, air guy, and then that paid the bills for it until I could, I refined my surfing enough to get to the tour. It's a natural progression for me. And some guys maybe won't ever make that progression, but I want there to be a platform for these guys that are super talented but aren't, don't have that mindset of being able to get to do, you know, three turns to the beach, link their maneuvers perfectly, make sure their arcs are perfectly carved and all that kind of stuff. When they really, they just want to go out there and go big and just do the best stuff and do the most craziest stuff that's going down. Well, I think it's great for, for guys like us because we don't really have an outlet besides like making little videos. And now like the internet, it's like there's so much stuff coming out. Even if you do like make a really rad video, it only lasts for like a day or two. This is just another cool big platform for us and well, it's not the first of its kind, but it's like the revamp. When I was growing up, this was this was all happening, and then I felt like right when I became a pro surfer, this all disappeared. Now it's like finally happening again. You got your your backside aerial 360, and you got your frontside aerial 360, and you got your alley oops and your basic aerials with different variations of grabs. So. Once you get that all mixed up and do a little heat, then you're having lots of fun. Yeah, the old air show days were awesome. I was a young guy, I was probably like 16 when I started doing them, and I was really looking up to the, the air show scene and this like Santa Cruz guys, all these American kind of punk rock kind of world that was going in the late 90s and early 2000s. 
Yeah, so there was an air show series in Australia that qualified me to go to the World Championships that was in America when I was 17 and when won the world title there, which was super exciting. And then, you know, it was good times. It was, it was fun. It was some of my favorite times of my life. And it's pretty amazing to have those memories with those kind of characters and that that I got to have. So hopefully I can give those memories to this next generation with this platform we're building here. I reckon it's going to be so good. It's sick how we got a mix of free surfer and CT guys, so they both can have like you know, different approaches. They're all pretty gnarly, like no one's, no one's not gnarly, like everyone in there can do like the craziest shit if they get the right way, so it's so good that Kersey's pulled this out for us because we can go and work on video parts and stuff at the same time and then come and do this as like a casual tour. Having a contest like based thing for the free surfers and like another tour is home saying to push the sport forward and faster than ever, like, than ever before. I think one of the greatest things about the Airborne series is just the passion that Josh brings. He took his passion from being a surfer and a competitor and basically have he's built something that gives an opportunity for a lot of people who may not just fit into uh, the different types of competitive environments that there are today. Uh, and I think the great partnership between Josh and the WSL is creating something that we have this amazing platform and elevating those, you know, these crazy stories and things that, uh, that these surfers are doing that weren't previously covered by the WSL. Really kind of gets me thinking on like, all right, what can I do that's different and that really will be the next big thing in a couple of years and stuff. Um, yeah, really trying to think outside the box and go, all right, like, you know, you've got the burials and stuff that people have started doing a couple of years ago. And um, so, yeah, what's the next stage? And trying to get ahead of everyone, so it's, it's awesome. Historically speaking with airs, back when they did the first air tour, there was a big division. And at that point in time, when my whole generation came to the WCT, it was a major shift in what high performance surfing was. All the power surfing guys were like just hating on airs and there was just this big difference of opinion on what's what in surfing at that time. And it kind of opened the door for the air shows because at that moment, a lot of the guys that were doing the best airs weren't on tour. What's really cool now is that some of the best aerialists in the world are the best surfers in the world, like your John Johns and Gabriel's and Felipe's and Idolo's. And those are definitely some of the best aerialists in the world. And they're on the top of the CT. And this air show is really intriguing in that way that we can see the best CT guys against the best free surf guys and, you know, see what happens in that type of format. Yeah, just to surf with, against them is pretty special because. You know, I've never had a chance to do that. And these CT guys are so consistent, they're so gnarly, the ones coming up, that it's going to take these these um, free surfers, uh, they're going to have to step up to, you know, to be able to beat them. Back in the air shows back in the day, the CT surfers weren't actually allowed to compete off tour. It was nothing like today, it was like, I don't know, the boys would go as hard as they could the night before, drinking, boozing, and then head down in the morning, just, you know, hang out on the beach, do wears all day. Someone will win and then the party would kick on again. It was wild, like people would be getting through doing ch like chop hops on the flats just to get a, an air on the board, you know what I mean? So the main air that was winning back then was the good old front side grab, air reverse, just to backwards and hold the grab all the way to the landing. That was the bread and butter. That was paying some dollars, that thing. <laughs> I guess everyone nowadays, you know, we're a lot more consistent and the airs are just so much more bigger now. Yeah, it's like black and white. I mean, they were doing gnarly stuff, but it's just like way gnarly now. Every year, like it does kind of, like you can't, you think oh, like that's, that's as high as you can get with that kind of small wave. But then, um, you know, with Gabrielle, like I keep seeing them just go higher and higher. And um, it's like, all right, like let's, let's do this in small waves and then also in the bigger waves too. So, you know, there's a mini competition in there. If a CT guy wins an event, the air guys will be kind of, okay, I want to, you know, we need to make sure we get one up on them the next next time, you know, because they're all competitive, all these free servers with their edits to them just pushing the sport. You can't push the sport and do these kind of maneuvers unless you're competitive, you know. I feel like I've created a platform where it's competitive, but 
it's really about you just going out there and try and rip and go big, you know, you know, them getting an hour just basically to land two big airs, so going big is the name of the game. Yeah, I was kind of surprised, but not really surprised to see the first two events of the year won by CT surfers. But it was really exciting going into France, knowing, you know, those two guys who won it, knowing that the free surf guys definitely wanted to step up and take a win and having those kind of conditions that we had in France offered up for them big, chunky, scary, kind of almost leveled that playing field of consistency getting taken away and some of the stuff the guys were going for definitely blew my mind. I think that definitely pushed the boundaries of what air surfing is and what it is, especially in those kind of conditions. I don't think anyone really ever thought about those kind of conditions being air conditions, for a, especially for a contest, and to that, like, wow, you can actually hit a six-foot TP section coming at you and throw it out to the flats. We saw some amazing airs done and to see Ian come away with a win um, was just insane. I'm really excited to see what happens next year and, and see where it takes us.